Hey everyone, my name is Brian Logan. I play bass trombone with the Houston Jazz Orchestra and uh, other numerous groups around town. And I'm looking forward to walking you through the three Texas Allstate Jazz Etudes today. Looking forward to it. Hi everyone again, this is Tips and Tricks for A22 of the Allstate Bass Trombone uh, Jazz Etudes. In the second etude, we have to talk about something very, very important, and that is legato. Okay, uh, playing legato on the trombone is probably the most complicated thing that we have to do. Uh, other instruments, button instruments, valve instruments, uh, you know, they can do different types of slurring. They can just press their, their buttons down and it works. You know, but trombone, we have, to, we have to negotiate this. All right, so there are three types of legato that we have to master to be able to play this ballad at the level it needs to be played. Uh, the first type is a natural slur, okay? Just like your natural lip slur that you've done for many, many years, okay? Standard between partials, right? And then the second one is a tongue slur on the trombone, okay? And that's where we go da 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 da. It's very different from ta 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 ta, where your tongue is, you know, your tongue is going straight at your teeth, and then da 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 da, where I imagine it coming from somewhere up high, and it's just kind of grazing your 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 upper, um, your teeth the upper part of your mouth just a little bit so da 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 say that a little bit da 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 that's what you have to master on the trombone that's the kind of legato we have to be able to do with this okay the third type of legato is a valve slur okay we're going to have to do that in this uh, ballad uh, all over the place Okay, so uh, like even at the very beginning, I'm doing like in the first bar between the D and the F, I'm going to legato tongue, and then between the F and the A, I'm going to natural slur, I'm going to natural slur back to the F, and then I'm going to natural slur to the G. Okay, that's what you've got to do. Too many times, I judge these competitions a lot, and a lot of the time, I hear this. 
It's just not smooth enough. It needs to be more legato, okay? Um, and that's going to be kind of all over the place. Uh, to practice legato, I like to use um, Clark Studies. If you don't know what Clark Studies are, um, you can look it up or you can send me an email. I'll tell you what it is. Uh, Clark Studies, I like to use um, maybe this Clark Study. It works on everything. It works on legato tongue. It works on natural slurring. And then I'll do it down an octave, too. Mm. I'll do that, okay? And that'll help with my, with my air and my tone and getting my legato where it needs to be. Um, so that's going to be a reoccurring thing. You know, this being the ballad, you know, they didn't mark uh, slurs on this. It's just accepted that you know that you're supposed to do that, okay? Uh, and let's, let's talk about something else that's really important. In the ballad, you know, what makes the ballad so difficult is basically what's on the page here is just a, a skeleton, uh, in which to paraphrase on, okay? It's just a, you know, I mean, we want to play the rhythms that the composer put on the page, but, but we have to make uh, educated choices of where to embellish a little bit. Uh, I encourage you to listen to all great jazz artists, you know, J.J. Johnson, okay? Number one, okay? Uh, listening to his ballads and what he does, and Irby Green, uh, some sensational uh, choices that they make in their ballads. Um, uh, so definitely slide vibrato uh, is approved. Please do it. I think it's a great thing. Um, I do it uh, in the first bar. I do it at the end of the third bar. Uh, basically any long note. I'm going to do a little bit of slide vibrato. Let me talk about that, of how I do that. There's a couple of rules with slide vibrato. Um, with slide vibrato, you're going to hold the note first, straight. Okay, don't, don't do it right when you get to the note. You're going to hold it straight, and then you're going to go up first. Don't go down first, okay? Like if I play um, uh, like this bar five. Mm. Oh, I don't do that. Okay, you got to start up first. And also notice something else I did. Right when you start the slide vibrato, there should be a tapering that happens. Okay, don't just sustain. That's not that's not right. So when you whenever you start the slide vibrato, I don't care if it's in the middle of the measure or the last note of the piece or something. Always there should be a, a cue in your brain that happens that you start doing a, a decrescendo. Okay, it's just a way to color the sound a little bit. Okay, we don't want to interrupt the the pitch you know too much or or, or affect the pitch too much. Um, let's see here. You know, there's no dynamics. You know, which I like because everybody can be creative. Again, as I said, this is just a skeleton. Uh, you know, version of what you want to as, as do on the ballad, okay? Um, you know, I do a, a crescendo in bar seven, and then a decrescendo in bar eight, a crescendo in bar four, and then a decrescendo in bar six, you know, uh, and you can find your own ways to do it. Um, you may notice in my video that uh, that I do some pretty long phrases, you know, and that's on purpose, you know, and this is a very difficult etude. Um, you know, I try to make it as musically uh, sound as I could, and uh, you know, but don't feel like you have to make the long phrase like what I made, you know. But that's why breathing exercises are extremely important on this. Uh, I'll tell you one that I do, you know, and I use uh, I use a breathing tube a lot too. Uh, you can get these at any hardware store, and uh, it's very very helpful. Okay, we gotta fill up when you play bass trombone. And breathing exercise that I do, you know, I'll just take a deep deep breath, and I'm looking at this part of my chest. I want that to fill up. Okay, and sometimes I'll put my hands above my head and I'll do three more breaths. And then I'll put my arms down slowly and I just want to see if it looks like, you know, I have so much air in my body right now. Okay, and I'll do that a handful of times. I do that at the beginning of all of my practice sessions, okay, or any concert that I'm about to play. Um, if I, I've done it so long now that if I don't do it, it feels weird. <laughs> so, uh, and it'll become that way for you too if you stick, uh, stick with it and are consistent with it. Um, let's see, uh, uh, one other tricky measure, probably the trickiest measure of the piece, is bar 10. Uh, it's pretty, pretty difficult. Uh, watch out for the F-sharp accidentals. Um, you have three F-sharps in that measure, okay? Um, the third F-sharp, I'm going to play in V1. I said this in one of my other videos, but uh, I have kind of my own terminology with the, with the vowels. Uh, for the first vowel, I say T for trigger. For the second vowel, I say V 
uh, V is independent second vowel, and then when I use both vowels, I do X, okay? It always made me think of like an X, like what my fingers are doing, I guess. Um, but that's the term terminology I use that works for me, and, and I use that with my students for many, many, many years. Um, so uh, look at bar 10. Let me play bar 10 slowly. You can play along with me if you have your horn with you. I'm going to play it in half time, actually. So if you noticed, I played the third F sharp in V1, and then I played the B natural at the end of the measure in V4. For me, it's like a sharp V4. You'll have to kind of see where it is for you, um, but I imagine that the B and the D will not be in the same position, just so you know. You're going to have to go out a little bit for the last D. Um, and uh, if you noticed in my, in my video when I was playing it, uh, you know, I add a couple of scoops in places, and you don't have to do the same places that I do. You can, you know, you can add wherever you feel, uh, but a couple of times when it was a, a chord tone, you know, I added, uh, like in the second bar, uh, I added a, um, a scoop to the C sharp that's on beat three. In bar 17, that may be another spot, I play the E in trigger second, the D in X1, and then the pedal B flat in first, and then as I'm going through the measure, I catch the B flat in trigger flat third. Because uh, we want to avoid, again on the trombone, going you know, back and forth too much, okay? Um, so let me play bar 17. Mm, mm. So if you saw what I did, I caught that B flat, and it just makes for for the positions to be much closer together, which I think uh, makes the performance better. And the last, second to last measure, um, I'm playing the B natural in V sharp four and the F in V, uh, v flat two, that's where I play uh, low F, and then the C sharp in X two and the low D in X one. Um, I think that works, uh, works really, really well, and you can hold that last note for a long time and do a nice tapering decrescendo. You know, you want your sound in the room, you know, you know feel free to hold on to that last note for a long time. Okay, uh, I hear too many guys and girls at competitions that cut off last notes too soon, you know, and, and it, maybe because they're uncomfortable or something, but, but it shows a lot of maturity if you can hold that last note out and just let it evaporate in the room. I promise if, if you get the right effect, you'll feel the, the, the players behind you in the re region room kind of just, uh, kind of just exhale, you know, and it, it's, that's the kind of effect you want. You want them to be really, really impressed with what you're doing, how mature you sound. Uh, so anyways, thanks again. Um, this has been a lot of fun and uh, let me know if you have any other questions, um, but uh, I, I really enjoyed helping you. Thank you.